So what is well, going on, Rich? We got we already got one guy in here stopping us right off the bat, man. He was not wasting any time getting in here. So. Whether you're on the front lines of repair, oh, rough, rough. keeping the kitchen running smoothly. Uh, oh, man. Another day. You know how it goes. Industry. This podcast yep. is your go-to source Saving for Saving the world one kitchen at a time. Tech tips and real stories Basically, from the field. Yeah. He couldn't make it to church on easier. Sunday, so he had Using to tie to actually work. And our safety <laughs> Taking care work. of the Lord's chicken. That's what Viper's all about. The Lord's the chicken. Are That's my favorite. Non-toxic. That's my favorite name to call a restaurant, the Lord's chicken. Everybody knows what you're talking about. The Lord's chicken. No, that was great. That that change out went pretty smooth. I got no complaints about it. Cooler. It's, it's actually better doing it when they're not there, especially, you know, they're so freaking busy. There's other places you could do it in the middle of lunchtime and hardly see anybody, but you can't do it there. Was it a cooler or a freezer? Cooler. Oh, so it's not too bad then. And it was, they had an old system and they still had like the uh, mechanical thermostat on it and, and all that crap. And now they got an intelligent. They were like, a couple of people that came up came in while we were doing it were like, oh, cool. Like, like yeah, bro. Like, y'all, I don't know. Y'all's was at least 20 something years old. So you're good now. Dude, I've got Chick fil A's that are five years old and already remodeling them. I'm like, how? Like, they were built right before COVID and they're like remodeling them already. I was like, geez, you guys are making the money. The one right yeah. up the street from my house, I think, was seven years old and they remodeled at year five. I think it was. Redid the drive through and stuff. Dude, I don't care how bad that drive through looks. You are in or now there before you even know it. I'm like, these people got to figure it out. Dude, they'll bring food out to your car. Like, you're stuck three deep. They're bringing food to your car. And you, you know, you can eat while you wait to get out of line, dude. They're not around. <laughs> yeah, for real. I always they tell that. got it down, Pat. I always tell the owner, the one up the street here, that she needs to try to get a cabinet position in the government because, <laughs> I mean, it. yeah. Yeah, it's just like boom, boom, boom. You're in and out. Like, this is the only place that a line does not matter. Yeah. Yeah. I love Chick-fil-A, dude. The food's good. People are nice. Yeah. It, it's a greasy chicken place, but, I mean, some are cleaner than others. It's it's, it's wild. You know, they're just a different for, owner. For what they do, they're insanely clean. At least oh, yeah. nine out of ten of the ones that I've been in, like, for frying stuff all day nonstop. And what trips me out, too, is, like, how nice they are even to us as as technicians like whenever i go to work on the dishwasher and i try to get cardboard and i'm like oh i can lay out the cardboard no they like they want to lay it out and spread it and let us know if you need more and this and that i'm like you y'all know y'all paying me right <laughs> like i understand you're this nice to the customer but you ain't got to be this nice to me <laughs> so i had a guy last week or the week before he's like man has the, have you ever been carded to go into a restaurant to go into the kitchen i was like what do you mean he's like this Chick-fil-A asked to see my ID for they let me in the kitchen. I was like, I would have left, dude. I would just turn around and walked what? off. I'd, I'd be like, nope, see you, and left. But, yeah, she, she asked for his ID, and she was like, I just want to make sure no one, uh, you, you know, whoever's here is supposed to be here. I'm like, so someone will steal a uniform and just, like, walk in your kitchen? I'm like, <laughs> uh, that was great. I does, was like, the, does the veto bag on my back not give it away that I actually work <laughs> for a living? <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. McCann wants to jump on. Um, let me send you. Let's see if I still got your email. Is this Matt or Megan or both? But yeah, I love Chick Fil A, dude. They're cool. Um, they always feed you. They take care of you. They're super polite, nice. They'll clean up after you. Like I've had, I've had some like clean my tools, like run through the dish machine, like wipe them off and dry them. Like, what is going on here? Is this like a Twilight Zone? <laughs> That's my first call in the mornings, actually, the Chick Fil A. But it's one in the mall, so it's like small, uh, small. You, you're not getting into like nine o'clock either. Well, this one they said they get there about eight thirty, but it's uh for their two door under counter uh Carlson unit. So uh that when I told the guy I have to change out it's got a leaky evaporator, so I'm doing the evaporator, the cap tube, and the filter dryer. And he's like, Man, we don't have a whole lot of room and I said don't worry, this thing's on casters. I know the people at the mall. So we're going to roll it down and then across the food court and go to the mechanics bay and do it in there. And then whenever it's all good to go, we're going to roll it back and they can put it wherever they need to put it. Nice. <clears throat> all of my stores have gotten rid of those um, refrigerated prep tables. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to those Duke like ice bath stations because – I don't know if I've done that. Randall gave him like a five-year warranty, no questions asked, dude. Mm -hmm. 
and, and I'd be in there like changing compressors or anything else because they get full of flour, you know, burn them up. But yeah, they went to those uh, Duke ice bath systems, and the only thing I've ever had to do on those is like the little shocks or whatever to help raise them and lower them. Yeah, I had to do a warranty call on a we last week. I think I believe it was the beginning of last week. We installed a, a two door reach in Delfield. And uh, I was actually there working on one of the Henny Penny pressure fryers. Um, and uh, that thing was just making a god awful noise. And I knew it was going to be a warranty call. But uh, when I was there, I, I told the guys working with us, I said, I can't stand it. I got to go up there and see what's going on. And uh, here it was the blade had already come loose off of the post on the condenser motor. So I told the manager, I'm like, go ahead and put in a warranty call. We, we, you know, we're ASA for them. So got them taken care of. But I was like, man, that didn't even last a week. <laughs> so how's the kitchen life treating you? You still enjoying it? I am. I am. I'm getting more comfortable now. Um, you know, it's just, I've got past the, the shock and all the fryers and everything. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. the shock of the grease landing on your face while you're trying to fix the fryer. Yeah, and I know, Pat, I know, Pat, you're a trainer. You you train for Fry Masters. I still don't like Fry Masters, but, not because I don't think they're a good product, because they are. It's just overly complicated. It is crazy. I've got a pretty good story about one this week. Oh no, my camera died. I'm still here. Why did this thing die? How do you like Henny Pennies then? <laughs> I, I like Henny Pennies a lot. Actually, that pressure fryer, I looked at a pressure fryer today. Uh, it was a Henny Penny PX, PXE 100. Yeah, it's, I don't, it's, it's not as, there's not as much stuff. It's not as all bells and whistles and stuff that the Fry Masters are, but whatever, you know, company pay, or the, the customer pays for whatever they want. So I'm just here to fix it. That's right. Uh, so I uh, I do a ton of work at, on the, you know, south of the border restaurant or, you know, whatever. Taco Bell, let's just be honest here. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I did something really dumb. I've done it a million times and gotten away with it. Like never been an issue. Um, so I had a clogged elbow in the back. Uh, I'd already unclogged the OQS. I made a video about it, but I'd cut out the part where I screwed up. But I, uh, I already clogged the pre-screen, the OQS, and I went to filter it, and it started bypassing through the pressure relief back into the drain. So, okay, it's clogged in the elbow. So it's filtering, and it stops filtering times out because, it, you know, it doesn't know if it's full, so it's asking if it's full. So if you don't hit yes or no, it just stays there. So I undo the fitting from the elbow before the at linear action where I'm cleaning it out, and the guy's cooking food in the other side and starts beeping. Well, another guy walks by and thought it was the side I was working on, and hit mm -hmm. no and turn the filter pump back on, dude. And it just sprayed like oh. well all over the wall, all over me. Luckily, it was cold. It was cold. But I got yeah. up, dude, and I was screaming and cussing that guy out. I thought he was going to cry, dude. I was hot. So I was covered in oil from like the waist down, front, back, ass. My van seat's still covered in oil for like the whole day, dude. And I was like, I almost went home. I was like, screw it. I'm Taco Bell's. That's all I got all day. It's front clogged fryers. Might as well just embrace it and just keep going. Jeez. It's one of those ones where you come home, you just take your pants off, throw them in a the bag, and take them to the shop and let someone else deal with it. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I went to training. Like, oh, never do that. It's going to come back to bite you in the butt one day. I'm just glad it wasn't like 300 degree oil because then I would have been really pissed. I probably would hit the guy, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh. and then. I was like, why would you? That's, yeah, third degree burns. Oh yeah, dude, it was it was terrible. <laughs> I sent them a link on their Instagram. I don't know if they can get into it. Um, yeah. So what? <coughs> uh, he said you don't like fryers. Uh, what's something else you uh, enjoy working on now? You changed over anything in particular? Or? Uh, I mean, besides all the refrigeration stuff. Um, and I don't hate working on fryers now. Um, <laughs> just to be honest, uh, just not your uh, gig. It's yeah, uh, hot wells. I don't mind hot wells. Um, worked on a. Uh, I didn't like them at first, but I'm getting used to them now. 
Uh, it's a, a Turbo Chef. I, I think it's a 2020 HHC pizza conveyor oven. Um, and uh, I've had to change out. It, it, it's not it's not the equipment. It's the location. They've got a convection oven on the bottom. And they've got two stacked uh, conveyor ovens. And all that heat's rising and they don't have enough air movement. Their hood's not big enough. And it's just frying the components in that upper unit. Um, I've had to change the drive, belt drive, belt motor, and had to change the VFD on it the other day. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, so they're 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 uh, growing on me. Yeah, there's something about you know not properly you know moving heat away from upper units that, that tends to be a problem. And yeah, that, well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, there's a humongous chain that someone we all know works for. <laughs> It has some major issues with some ovens heating up other ovens and burning them up. So, yeah, I, I worked when I, because I needed to call tech support to verify that it was that VFD speed control for the belt. And I'm like, I'm going to do some homework before I call them. And I put uh, my therm, uh, thermometer on the very top of that unit and it was reading 137 degrees. It's a, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I want to see, and because I mean, it just has his little axial fans on the backside to, to pull heat out of the cabinet where the electronics are. And I asked a guy, a Turbo Chef, and he's like, technically, that's the top end of normal. And I'm like, okay. I, I said, <laughs> technically, yeah. That's what I said. I said, is that one of those statements where I'm going to have to read between the lines? And he said, maybe. <laughs> I was like, okay. Here's a quick tip from our friends at Viper. In commercial kitchens, clean coils and evaporators are essential, and Viper's NSF registered products are the best choice. Safe, effective, and formulated to keep kitchen systems running smoothly. So thanks, Viper, for stepping up and helping out as always. So I had some little Lincoln Impinger 1000s or 1100, little tabletop electric ovens. And um, when you stack those, you get there's a plate on the bottom. Of, there's a channel up the back. When you stack them, they go on top of each other. It's just an air channel that sucks air across. Well, there's a plate on the bottom. You got to take it off the top. And so the, the bottom flue, it's not even a flue. It's just the like air intake goes up inside there. Well, we've been out there like four or five times for the bottom of an overheating and like burning out boards and everything. And like no one looked. Someone left that cap on so the bottom oven was never venting any hot air out. It was just cooking the whole internals the entire time, like for like a whole year. And like we changed that board like five times. And finally, I was like, you don't know, you're supposed to be there, guys. This thing can't breathe. I mean, like, it's, you know, they just, people get wrapped up in fixing a symptom. They don't fix the problem. Yeah. What is it? Chris Stevens says, big picture, the big picture. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I did have an interesting one, although it wasn't very technical, but it was interesting. It was a little, uh, uh, who makes it? I can't remember the manufacturer. Just a little um, preset commercial microwave oven. Just a little guy at, at the restaurant I'm sure we've all ate at. It's, I call it the fast food of Italian cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> and... and uh, Anyways, it was kept tripping the breaker. They wanted me to check it out, but they're like, if it's going to cost too much money, we'll just buy a new one. I'm like, okay. Uh, it kept tripping the breaker. Uh, I ended up hooking it up on the lead before it even got to the transformer. And that sucker was pulling 52.75 amps. I was like, okay. yeah. I was like, yep, there's the problem. Dude, I am not a microwave fan. I'll tell you right now. I'll work on it if I have to, but if I don't have to, I'm not touching those things. Like, I learned very early on that I don't wear a wedding ring anymore because mine's got an arc mark because it arced. Luckily, it arced the cavity. So it, it grounded out. My wedding ring is grounded out and it arced and burned it up. So I was like, oh, no more wedding ring. And I'm going to steer clear of microwaves. Yeah, they still, I haven't, I haven't had a mirror shift call in a long time, but that's. I know you guys are going to call me weird and, and say they're masochistic and whatever else, but I still like my Mary Chefs. I uh, like Mary Chefs personally. I don't mind. I was just, I don't like working on microwaves, man. I think people do dumb stuff. Um, 
not too well a company we actually bought like the owner's son they found him like dead in the warehouse he got shocked on the microwave working on it in the warehouse oh crap yeah so you gotta be careful man like i had a guy i walked in the back the back of the shop and he was getting ready to check high voltage with his meter i was like your meter is rated at a thousand volts i was like that silicone insulation ain't gonna save you bud you're gonna die <laughs> don't do this yeah now you just gotta be smart about it is all yep yeah, was, i was like the first thing i tell you is you can't check high voltage don't try it <laughs> yeah yeah you're yeah. Air, do that kind of stuff so so how did the how did the uh refrigeration class uh training go i mean it looked good from the pictures and stuff yeah i've got some more content to put out our brazing day and try to put some stuff together it's gonna find time to do it it was an absolute blast man i know it's the first time i used those mock-ups um they've used them for two other classes and um the guy that the other guy the other teacher he's college educated and it's what he did when he went to trade school was that those mock-ups you know so we've incorporated that and it was actually really cool um they're we uh, went through a bunch of basic thermodynamics and stuff day one and terms and stuff like that and then tools and then once i got into tools um we went over to piping so we went out to the went out there and we um, i made them all flare everything i made them start over from scratch there was pipe there they could have used just hooked it up but i wanted everybody to get a chance with a flare tool um and you know we had multiple different flare tools and everyone used the stupid flare block the old school way and I made them uh, initial their flare nuts, so if it leaked, they go back and fix it. Because I'm that kind of guy. I'm like, I just want them to learn. I'm not being mean, but right. they got, you know, you got to learn if it leaks. Let's see why it leaked. You know, and fix it. And uh, we pressurized it overnight. I had two leaked. One was actually not even a joint. They did um, people picking those condensing units up by the loop. Actually broke it, cracked it at the uh, exit of the um, receiver. So the other one just had a leak somewhere, and they fixed them, and we wired them up. Got them running, set super heat, sub cooling, check sub cooling, all that stuff. It was, it was fun. It was a blast. Um, 13 guys, and they all learned. They all improved, and no one was partiers. I mean, if they were, they hit it pretty well, so I can't complain there. Any burnt fingers? No, no, no burnt fingers. Um, I don't think anybody got shocked. They, uh, they found a bunch of fuses, and they were slow blow for the defrost terminals. And the bad thing is the slow blow fuse doesn't blow before the circuit breaker does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, like, lights get flickering. I'm like, where'd you guys get these fuses at? Like, do you even see what they are? And they were all slow blow 20s. I'm like, dude, you're never going to blow that fuse. You're going to keep tripping the breaker. You might as well hardwire at that point. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I've been using the, man, I've been really digging that little Ambro kit. Man, that that is my go-to. I've been using that for the last three or four brace jobs I've done. I've not even broke out the big boys. Because I got that in that MB4 backpack, and it's got the hook, so... Like the other day, I had to um, I had to redo a joint. Uh, it was flare on one end and it brazed on the other. And I'm like, I'm not bringing my big unit in. So I brought that Ambrose up and I hooked it on the shelf that was beside of me. And I mean, gosh, I was like, how did I ever live without this thing? But it's just it's just so much fun to use. No nasty. We don't keep jars of radiation. We're supposed to actually have like. <laughs> Little checkers for doors and check for leaks, but I, I've been doing this twenty years and I've never seen I've never seen one in person. So my thing's leaking, it's leaking. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a company, I guess I won't name them, but they make speed ovens. And this is a non warranty call or anything. Try to tell me I was not allowed to work on their oven if I wasn't microwave certified. And I had to give them a a leakage report in order to work on their oven. I'm like, uh, yeah, this ain't warranty. Y'all tripping. Well, I do have a microwave leak detector in the van. I bought one. Uh, Yeah, I mean, they're cheap. They're like $29 or I think it was like $29. Like my mom and dad's. Yeah, my mom and dad's microwave at their house was acting up. And my dad was saying every time he'd get around it with... uh, He has a little handheld radio. He listens to the radio when he's working in the kitchen. and. Every time he'd get near there, they were running the microwave, and he had a little handheld radio. He said it's getting all kinds of static. So I was like, hey, hold on a second. Yes, yeah, so I went out to the van, and I got my microwave leak detector. I, it works. I mean, I found the leak. They got a new one, and it doesn't do it anymore. But... <laughs> AM radio sets it off. <laughs> it does. It, I, it was weird, man. It was causing all kinds of weird static and stuff. But so how are you doing, Rich? Uh, Looks like you're kicking butt and chewing bubble gum and you're all out of bubble gum, man. 
Yeah, no, I'm doing good. Um, I actually, we got on this talk about speed ovens and uh, it dawned on me that I did an estimate to repair a turbo chef and this company, this facilities company that sent me out there, they're not responding to me. So I was just uh, sending them the invoice since they don't want to respond to the, the estimate. But yeah, everything's doing good. It slowed down a little bit um, this past week, but it's, like I was telling Pat earlier, it's kind of like the calm before the storm because I got so much big crap lined up over the next few weeks that I'm like, I'm not even trying to get any more business than I need to, you know, this particular week and, and next week because I'm probably going to be r- working close to a month straight. The amount of just just in walk-in coolers alone that I've got to install coming up plus regular service, it's insane. But I'm not complaining about it. I want to hire... By the end of next year, the goal is to have two more trucks on the road, not counting my son if he gets his own truck. So I want to have two, like, you know, fully independent technicians by the end of next year. And I know exactly who, who I want the two technicians to be. So getting ready to start um, strategizing how to actually do that. Yeah, that's cool. Your son looks like he's killing it, man. Yeah, he's doing good. He learns yeah, quick keep- and he's got high standards like I do, so. Oh, uh, then you can't beat that. Just make sure and keep posting pictures of him working on stuff, man. That's that's cool. I enjoy seeing that stuff. Cool. Yeah, I heard good things about him at Sfessa. Um, He went to Sfessa a couple of months ago, and Dan said he was quiet at first, and he was all paranoid about the test, and then he realized, you know, once he realized that everybody else is in the same damn boat, he was fine. He was cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. You yep. get there, you don't, you don't know anybody's background or what their experience is, and you just, like, freak out. I'm like, dude, you're all there for a reason. You know what I mean? So, yep. I mean, he and came I got from, from Safeza, and I had a, a waffle maker that I was fixing for a customer, but I, I brought it home to work on it here. And he's like, I could rewire that whole thing now. And I'm like, all right, that, that's why I sent you there. Exactly. Yeah, heck yeah. I got a new guy uh, that started. Uh, he's been working with me. He uh, did, he's done some residential, but, you know, he's he's pretty green. So I've been enjoying that. Like last couple of days, we've had a couple of PMs on uh, on some uh, Hoshizaki. So I've been let him tear stuff apart while I'm, you know, watching him and stuff like that, and showing him showing him how a clean evaporator should look, and you know, just all the the normal things, and you know, explaining to him like he was saying like there's you know there's three ports what's that three ports for and i said well you got your high and your low side and i said you're you have to recover it's you know three point recovery and he was like cool and then he really was uh he really thought it was cool whenever the hot gas valve kicked on and you could watch the 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 frost disappear yeah this i said watch this i said you'll see and I put my gauges on her so he could see the pressure change. I was like, yeah, you'll watch that frost disappear. But anyways, I'll let Matt and Megan do their thing. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. how's it going? They're all professional over there. they got a sign and a microphone now. What's going on? I'm, that clean. And I'm look- here on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my kitchen. It's it's only set up because we had a meeting this morning. But uh, I heard I was being summoned. So. <laughs> Rich said you wanted to come on, so I sent the invite out. <laughs> I literally just walked in the door, feed, came straight downstairs. Like, what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I totally made that up. <laughs> hey, we're here now. It worked. So it worked. So it. Maybe they didn't know they wanted to come on, but there you go. <laughs> so what's up? Has, what I missed? Has the snow melted? There's still some snow on some roofs and you know, in the shaded spots, but you know. It was a fun three days of constant roof work. The first day we had a bunch of cooling startup scheduled so there was no avoiding being outside the entire day mm-hmm. and then no cooling no cooling calls and a couple no heats yeah so it's almost gone now it's still in the shadows it will snow again though this week so oh, yeah it's that season for you guys it's never ending sounds horrible yeah <laughs> just... it's not bad the sun's out enough like there's 300 plus days of sunshine here in colorado so like most days it's like actually hot like until that sun goes behind a cloud or starts to go down and then it gets cold fast. <laughs> so just can't imagine doing air conditioning calls of snow on the roof. That's just not <laughs> we had to transition over the van. So we had to get out the tank heater, mm-hmm. the charging blanket to balance uh, head pressure, restock all the head pressure controls. You know, it take the summer stuff out and put the winter stuff on. So that's wild. I mean, you got a specialized market. You get your own little niche. You're just out there killing it. So that's cool. 
Yeah. I mean, come hang out with us. We'll teach you some low ambient cooling. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I'll, I'll teach you how to fry some stuff, fix some fryers if you want. <laughs> I got a branch out there. I may end up out there training one day. If I do, I'll bring the wife out. That yeah, for sure. Come for hang. Sure. So what's new? Anything? Just work. Work, work, work. Yeah. We've been doing more and more uh, warm, cooler quotes. I was going to ask you guys what you think about uh, just cooler brands in general. The cooler we were working on the other day had a, a low pressure switch instead of a, a manual adjust, low pressure control. And I was curious what you guys thought on, do you rip that out just as a rule or do you ever let that ride? I let it ride until it fails and then I put in what I want to put in. <laughs> yeah, okay. same. Yeah. Let it ride. So what is this, a warm cooler? So what does that mean? What temperature is it running at? 60. 60. So what are they using to keep it from drying out or? To increase the shelf life. Yeah. Okay. So, Product storage. Yeah. But so, it's a difficult task for an air conditioner and an easy task for a fridge, right? Well, I mean, it could be, it could be an easy task, but then once again, they're designed to run below 40. So now you're trying to run them at 60 and they're going to short cycle and you're going to have humidity problems and. It's a whole nother can of worms, <laughs> but I'm sure those are all the problems we deal with already, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sure you could calculate them to run at sixty. No, you would just have to lower down the the capacity or whatnot, downsize it a couple sizes. Oh yeah, definitely have to be downsized. But I mean, I you can go on the chart and fill it out like you're ripening bananas, and it'll auto fill for sixty on a oh okay the load calculation software. So, That's but you point. can't latent performance is really hard. Mm -hmm. to calculate you know so we really just encourage them to store finished product there because yeah the humidity unless they add dehumidifiers and make it a a whole thing we've had a hard time getting any walk-in box manufacturer to really like give us a latent performance chart you know to yeah. battle a big dehumidification around who do you uh who have you what manufacturers are you guys dealing with for boxes we talked to Heatcraft. Okay. And that family, I don't even know what that box is that you just fit. I mean, what we come across in the field is a little bit of uh, a bunch of brands I don't recognize. A lot of it has been sold by the lowest contractor. And looks like it got uninstalled somewhere and reinstalled, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't I wouldn't say that there's a brand that we're really happy with. We're kind of looking to, to pick a brand to kind of like get behind that's would be a reliable option. I would, I would say... Reach out to uh, Imperial Brown. I just picked them up. Okay. They do a lot more customized and specific type walk-ins um, versus like strictly food service. So I came across them because I did the refrigeration install on a cold room for a place. I'm still not sure what they do, but they do something with manufacturing electrical insulation or some crap like that. Right. Um, and when I went on Imperial Brown's website, it looks like they do a lot of spec stuff in addition to just okay. traditional food service. So I'd talk to them and see. Perfect. Yeah, we were looking at some photos of some uh, meat lockers with ducted walk-in equipment. Have you guys ever worked on anything like that? Anything ducted? Uh, never seen that. Oh, I've seen it, but never worked time I've on it. it. Okay. Yeah, it was a fabric. The fabric duct manufacturer was showing off their product. So I wasn't sure who the equipment manufacturer was or who put it together, but it looked pretty sweet <laughs> yeah that might actually that sounds like that might actually be a better work for what you guys are wanting to do than actual evaporator because you could control humidity you could control the air coming in i mean you know it, there's more control with like a ducted setup like that it'd be a lot more airflow than a versus a traditional walk-in style just having that you know, one or yeah. two in there. I think is that the product category just ducted walk in, or is that falling into something else? That's something someone made. Someone that came up with. Uh, I'm not knocking it, but it, it probably would be the better way to go. Actually, I'd bet because I mean, pretty much the walk in is just four inch insulated panels. I mean, high density foam and stainless steel or whatever on the outside. So I mean, it's just pretty much an insulated box. I mean, at that point, you could do whatever you want. So. Someone's probably just came up with that. It probably, I imagine that would work a lot better than just a traditional box, though. Okay. A lot more airflow, guaranteed. I mean, it's going to work because you have to keep it at 60. So I don't know. It'd be something to play with and see, though. Yeah. More and more people just, are wanting to 
dry and hold at 60. So we're crossing this bridge more and more often. I just dropped the contact info in the private part of the chat. I was going to uh, say, for... I see it. I'm writing it down now. Thank yeah, you. there you go. Cool. I was looking. I was like, what's the private chat? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble if a private chat pops up. There's Jason telling him like you're doing something. Uh, <laughs> he was traveling. I was trying to get him on. I kept sending him an invite anyways. <laughs> Poor Jason. I know he's in the audience watching. Is he? I'm just talking crap. Uh, he got- <laughs> He'll hear it tomorrow, I mean, me, at least. <laughs> me talking crap got Matt and Megan on, so you know if I keep it up, we might. <laughs> right, maybe Jason will show. So, so, are you coming to AHR this year, Rich? I'm not going anywhere this year. Come on. I'm trying for Vegas. I'm trying for Vegas. Twenty. <laughs> I'm trying next year if I can get at least one more tech out there, or you know, another tech besides me, then I could take off a little bit of time and start going to to shows and conferences and stuff. But I'm too busy right now. Way too busy. Yeah, it's our only workcation that we do. So I'm excited though. The HVAC school symposium, mm-hmm. tactical awards, HR Expo. Um, it's gonna it's be gonna be a fun week. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually going down a little early. I'm gonna go hang out with um American Panel uh walking company. They're just north of where we're gonna be. So I think we'll go over there for a day or two and hang out with them, make some content and maybe record nice. some there. So nice. I, the goal is to work like three days in the month of February. So I'll see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I've got HVAC school symposium, HR tactical, uh, AHR. So that's like two weeks there. And then I've got wet show, which is like two or three days in Indy, which is a plumbing show. Mm-hmm. And then I've got um, NAFM, which is a big every two year um, national association of food equipment manufacturers. It's all the rest of our equipment's here. So that's like the whole, that's like February. Like my whole February is just blown. I think I got like three days of work. Man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get my boss, Matt, to make a work trip training, it's whatever. It. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. Has so, he been before? Mm-mm. He went to Sefesa Conference this year, I think, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was down there. That's a good one to go to. Um, NAFM's good, NRA's good, which is, it's always in Chicago every single year. Same place, same weekend. It's like the weekend before the holiday. Um, it's a pretty cool show because if you go to that show and you leave hungry, you're a fool. Um, it's literally every brand manufacturer there, they're making food. There's food companies there making food. And there's still people lined up to go into the, the food court. I'm like, you guys are stupid. You know where you're at, right? Like, <laughs> which, which show is it? Uh, NRA. There's beer and wine, like samples everywhere you go. It's terrible. Sounds fun. Oh, yeah. It's fun, but terrible. <laughs> go there skinny and come out of there with type 2 adult onset diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody, when I started this job 19 years ago, I was like 235 pounds, man. It was terrible. I loved it back then. Yeah, I would never survive working in the kitchens every day because I would probably have to eat the food. <laughs> I've had everything from the cheapest stuff to the most expensive stuff, and it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's side effects. You got to learn to say no and uh, yeah. not take everything that's given to you. <laughs> my I'm wife sure. told me, my wife told me the other day said, "Honey, you look like you're putting on a little bit of weight," and I was like. No, I'm just getting my winter coat. You know, people, <laughs> you know, animals shed their, their summer coat and they get their winter coat. And I'm just getting my winter coat ready. So, Adrian said there's a party at Jake's house. Uh, we're going to need the address for that. Um, <laughs> we just all bombard Jake. <laughs> just crash Jake's house. He won't mind. He don't care. <laughs> I told him if I was going to come down there, I wanted to plug his toilet up and he didn't know what to He is like, uh, I don't think you're gonna come to my house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, how many bathrooms you got, Jake? <laughs> um, Brian, where do you, how far do you live off of 77? 77, 77. I'm trying to think, 70. <laughs> no, it's where's name some cities at 77 are running through. I'm trying far, to think, or West End because I came down 77 through West Virginia, through Virginia. Maybe it was oh, a- I'm like I'm like two hours away. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not brought me down because forties close, so it like brought me down through that way. It was really cool, really cool scenic way. But um, yeah, I came down through there. I was like, I wonder how far Brian was from here. <laughs> yeah, just that's it's a little south southwest of me. Nice, nice. 
You need to come to West Virginia, man. I got all kinds of property to take you out and put you on some big deer so that you would actually kill something for a change. I just got to make time to go out. That's, oh. my, real problem. That's my real problem. That's That's fired. Uh, I'm going to go out this weekend. This weekend's opening rifle gun season, so I'll be out all weekend. So hopefully me or my son can get it done this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I, my uncle has a farm, I don't know, 45 minutes. It's got a couple hundred acres. Um I will go over there the second week because my cousins and their boys come in and hunt the first week. So we'll go over there. And that's two years ago. That's where my son killed his first buck at real nice eight point. My goal is to lose weight and get drawn and go hunt out in Colorado and hunt elk. Um, that's like a 10 year plan. So Matt's brother, Jared went out to Colorado this year and um, went elk hunting. Hey. He, yeah, he was he prepped hard for that. He was running half marathons and stuff like that. He said, Man, I thought I was prepared. Nope. And then he said he said, you know, you do a two mile hike with about a twenty three hundred vertical change and he said it oh, was yeah. whipping yeah, he said it was whipping my butt. And I said, Well that and the elevation change. I feel so, like I had a stroke just listening to that. Oh yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> We got a couple of bucks this year. One of his wife's car and went to work truck. I almost <laughs> had a doe this morning at like 3 30. They're running like 70 miles an hour. Did I see it the last second? Like slammed on the brakes. Set my yeah. GPS off. I'm sure I got an email for that. Uh, <laughs> well, I know the rut. I know the rut is in full swing here because I had a four point that I mean, and I wasn't going very fast at all. I didn't hit it or anything like that, but I saw him and like I laid on the horn. And normally with old veer left or veer right, no, he thought he was going to try to just jot right in front of me. I followed behind him for at least 250 yards before he decided to get off the road. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, he's got something on his mind, and then it ain't anything to do with eating. <laughs> it ain't survival. <laughs> no. He might have already hit his head that day. <laughs> yeah. I've had more deer run into my van than I've hit. Like, like the first one I hit, I slowed down and I just realized, like, if I just keep the same speed. Generally, it was like run to the side of the van and bounce off. So I've had like four or five just like bounce off the side of my van and I just like go about my business. I'm like, well, we'll see what happens later. Well, not at Red where I'm at now, but when I was at Next Tech, I was, I was actually at a stop sign out in the middle of nowhere and I heard a thump and I looked and it was Doe running down off the hill and she was like trying to put her brakes on. And, you know, it's kind of, she would lean back and her feet were forward and smacked right into the side of my van. Didn't do anything to it all, but I, that's the first time I've ever had a deer hit me instead of me hitting a deer. <laughs> I don't know. I lucked out when I lived in Ohio. Never hit a deer, never had a deer hit me, but a lot of close calls. <laughs> uh, did I see you? Everywhere out there. We drove back through Ohio and I've never seen so many trucks on the side of the road. I'm like, these guys are all hunting and I'm so jealous. <laughs> so. and there's some big deer in ohio because all the mm. cornfields and stuff oh yeah especially around uh uh this north was it northwest of st Clairsville up there where all the amish are there are some big deer up there yeah. where are you from in ohio megan daytonish area all right so about 45 minutes from dayton cincinnati or columbus at any given time but yeah you can have a dozen deer just in your yard Chilling, middle of the city. <laughs> That's funny. Sweet. I like Dayton. I like Xenia. I do not like Columbus. <laughs> I grew up next to Xenia. So. Yeah. Yeah. Xenia. Why do you, why do you cool. like Xenia? That's a, I can't say I've ever heard anybody say they like Xenia. <laughs> well, one of my hobbies is amateur radio. And every okay. year they have, they have that big event, a week long or, yeah, it's a week-long event, big flea market and product show and stuff. And I've been out there to Xenia a couple times, and I've always had a good time out there. Nice. That makes sense. <laughs> There's not so much else. What exactly there. is amateur radio? Ham radio? I don't know if you know. Ham radio, it's, I guess it would be glorified quote unquote C B, but you have to be licensed. You're gonna get beat up for saying that if someone hears you and knows about ham radio. <laughs> well, listen, they can come at me all day. I've been doing it for twenty seven years, so I'll tell them to go pound sand. I don't care. But 
it's 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 easy telecommunication telecommunications yeah. you got to be licensed um i could go on and on but i don't want to you know what i mean if you're interested rich i could get you hooked up that's all i can say <laughs> yeah, i'm just curious i don't i don't have no idea what it is like i've heard it before but i'm like i, I don't know what that means now total tech amateur radio is when you pick up another man's microwave on the am radio <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know who this dude is. I think Tolotech wants to join the show. No, he won't because he won't know who he is. <laughs> he likes to hide in a minute, whatever it is. Need to ask Total Total if he's gotten any into any fights with any of his neighbors lately. Uh oh, what do he do? Why? What happened? Uh, that supermarket refrigeration. Uh, he. Come does a live. I don't know if you guys have seen any of his stuff or not. But Total come on to one of his lives and said that he had gotten in, or had a, a scuffle or, or getting an argument or something with the, one of his neighbors. And so every time he's on a live, I like I devil him about it. It's like, have you have you kicked your neighbor's butt lately? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Give him a hard time. I just want to know who he is. That's all. <laughs> what he said, what he he's said. harassed us enough. What do you say? His name was Will Carrier or Willis Carrier or something. Will Carrier. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like, this dude says he's Will Carrier, and Rich's like, you know who that is, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who it is. Yeah, we're trying to find out who he was because he, was he seems like me a... and Pat's like yeah. his name is Will Carrier. I'm like, like Willis Carrier. Pat, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his brother's probably Dave Lennox too, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a pretty smart cat. I mean, from mm-hmm. you know, time I've talked to him and stuff. I don't know. He's hiding. He's hiding. So we'll see. Um, so what's it going to be like out there this winter? Um, how cold does it get out there in Colorado? We hit negative twenty last year. Holy smokes! It was I'm really rough. About for, 44. That was almost two weeks that it was. <laughs> yeah. Pretty rough. But the whole the whole state is very diverse, right? Exactly. So we're in, like, we're the end of the Great Plains. So we're right before the mountains start. So like in the mountains, it'll snow and stay snowing and there'll be like four feet of snow. But down here, it'll snow and melt and be sunshine and snow and melt and sunshine. It's so like, it's pretty tolerable. I feel like it could be a lot worse. Like we're not, we're not just stuck under the snow all the time. I think when people show up here in the middle of winter and it's like a beautiful blue day, like I thought it snowed here. So It'll be hit or miss all winter long. It'll snow on the days we plan to clean a condenser, and it'll be, you know, beautiful <laughs> on the days we have to work inside. Just yeah, that's the way it goes. <laughs> I think um, Colorado winters are not nearly as bad as an Ohio winter because we're in Ohio. It stays cold. Sun comes out just enough to melt some stuff, and then everything refreezes. So it's just ice after ice and big piles of snow everywhere. Where the sun really melts everything here. If snow lasts longer than three days, like that's rare. It's ice and mud, ice and mud, like Indiana, ice and mud. Mm-hmm. Snow it's, stays pretty and white out here. It's a nice change. Yeah, but it's gone. <laughs> so. hmm. How do you yeah. clean coils in the winter when it's that cold? I mean, just you know, during the day, it will get above 60. So yeah. and that's where it's like it. If the sun's out, it's usually pretty nice. But if the sun's not out, it's cold. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. You know, they don't always need it. It's all about those rooftop evaporators when they just can't breathe and they can't wait until spring, you know. But yeah, once we're in this season, a little bit of extra cottonwoods, just some head, you know, head pressure assistance. So yeah, it's artificial head pressure. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some days it helps, but uh, negative twenty was pretty rough last year because that was like frostbite. Had to go inside, warm up, like be very cautious. Yeah. Once you get below zero, 410A is a real pain to work with because it's zero is 50 PSI on the PT chart. So all your low pressure controls are going to all go out across the entire city at once unless you have like a bypass solution or they're cut out. It's like all together, all at once, we hit zero degrees and every low pressure switch starts going out overnight. And like, Yeah, because the unit can't build enough pressure and, and that low, low pressure just takes it out. Yeah, 410A wasn't designed for that range, right? Like, it's so what about the new stuff? The new stuff going to do the same same thing. The what yeah. Is it? yeah, and that's where like you can either bypass it or different people make timers like a bypass timer that'll bypass that safety for three minutes, let the compressor spool up, 
and then re-engage the low pressure safety. You know, so that's how you leave them in and avoid the nuisance calls. But not everybody the, wants. The thing is, when they were designing refrigerant and designing these systems, nobody expected you to be cooling when it's negative twenty degrees out. Yeah, that's, that's no. and imagine. like good luck getting refrigerant out of your tank if it's not heated. You know, it's like yeah. it's two is at like fifty psi. Your suction pressure is at a ninety nine. Like you got a long way to go before she's going to take any gas. So yeah, we. I mean, I run that in Indiana. Like if you charge something in the winter. Like if you don't bring that tank in when you start your call. You're like. Okay, I'm gonna throw it in the sink, turn the hot water on for a while, and let it bob for a while in the water. So yeah, I, and that's I imagine like trying to charge an AC up when it's 20 degrees outside. As soon as the vacuum pump comes out, I bring the tank heater on, which is like a Velcro tank heater, mm -hmm. and then plug that in and let the tank preheat while the vacuum pulls, so it's ready when the vacuum's ready and charging is just easy. <laughs> so have you ever tried using your reclaim machine just to force it in, or sometimes you have to. Okay. You know, but it's harder to like break the vacuum with the exact mm -hmm. right charge that way, where if you can just do it all in one shot, that's the way I prefer to do it. But yeah, I, if I, it slows down or you can't power it up, like it does work. It's a few more connections and an extra. So what's no one's came up with a real solution to this. It is kind of like everyone's just kind of doing their own little thing to get around it. There's there no like equipment specifically designed for these operations. There is. I mean, there. it's like a dedicated outside air equipment that's been modified, right? So most of the things that are branded like cannabis specific at the bare bones of it is like a DOAS system because it has the capacity to deal with this, right? Where it's built for outside air that's going to be this temperature where, you know, a regular piece of equipment never expected you to be running it this time of year. Is most of your guys' system split then, or do you have like rooftop package units, or just a mix of both? It's all over. All the place. over the place. We have residential splits. We have commercial splits, mini splits, a lot of package units. So, do you bring in outside air, or do you not allowed to bring in outside air into the environment? Or, I guess you probably they probably don't want outside air coming into their environment. I guess that's the reality of it. Uh, every blueprint there ever was has fresh air on it because the you know the HJ is going to die on the hill. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't understand, like, there's not going to be people in here all the time. There's CO2 emittance, there's alarms, there's sirens, like, so it's, every facility has it built in, but the cultivators want, you know, their spores and mold count under control. So they're very adamant that, like, no fresh air is to enter the building, but that gets complicated because the odor mitigation, you know, mm -hmm. so oftentimes we see just buildings under crazy negative pressure. Can't where open. everything just goes out but nothing comes in anymore because we're too worried about pollen from china floating in through a hole like right on but you have to do <laughs> something about this like i just broke out my normal manometer we were 0.38 from the front door to the main hallway like, that was last week at a facility you y'all do feel this right like the door <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't open the door like you're not allowed to leave <laughs> yeah so we see a lot of well, negative pressure because they're just sealing everything up. With all the filters out there, you would think that they would come up with a solution like using a DOAS unit and just running it through a crazy massive filter to catch any of that particulate so you don't get the mold and, and, and pollen mm -hmm. and everything else like that that would affect the crop. I and mean, and do. that would be the... Okay. You know, you can spend the money on fresh air intake. The other piece to this equation is they're piping in CO2. So they're paying for CO2 as a utility. And all that air exchange vents out the CO2 that they paid to put into the room. So oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. They pay thousands a month. It needs yeah. Like 10,000 for CO2. Artificial. Is that like... Is that like the medical no. grades, that high grade CO2? Is that, do they, or do this? It there... might be medical grade. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a waste gas. Like everybody has a, a tank farm somewhere, a little nozzle, and the truck comes like once a week, you know, once every two weeks and comes tops off the facility. And it all just, they set their PPMs based on what they want in the room. Yeah. So that brings out like a lot of the, uh, CO2 detection that's similar in the restaurants, right? Where yep. there's potential for life safety. So sirens, interlocks, and in some counties want fan exchanges. And some people are somehow grandfathered in without fresh air purges. 
but it still it sounds like it's just the wild wild west still it kind of is colorado is is like it started here a little bit so a lot of people just did what they were doing it wherever they were doing it and threw it in a commercial space you know where some of these other markets had a few years to kind of sit back and watch and then come fly out here and tour a facility and like man maybe drywall is not the right choice <laughs> you know so like they've learned a lot but there's a lot of legacy facilities out here you know and they're changing hands all the time and some people just like run it into the ground you know so yeah. we'll we'll help somebody take over a facility nobody's done a compressor a fan motor or a repair for like eight years <laughs> changed a belt <laughs> every unit is tanked there's like nine grounded compressors like it's gonna take some work to get this back up you know so yeah. Well, people probably think I'm going to get into the cannabis business, the legal cannabis business. And and then they, you know, they they've got champagne taste and beer money kind of thing. Yeah. Well, a lot of people spent money on like lights, nutrients, you know, genetics, that kind of stuff and treated HVAC like it was set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. But when it was a throw money at a game, they could just swap out a, you know, a system in three years and it wasn't a problem but now that everybody has yeah. to run their facilities like an actual business like it matters let's talk about maintenance let's talk about regular filter changes let's clean everything give you a fresh start yeah a lot of people we've had people straight up tell us be like man until a couple years ago this wasn't even real business you know you just threw money at problems and they went away you know and now they're like their profit margin has hit a point where if you're not automating if you're not watching your labor your utilities like that's who's really hurting right now like we're seeing a big transition in the cannabis space but it's like people who can run a crew with tight labor and can understand automation and understand that like fixing units are important like that's who's in business and a lot of the people going out of business are like very large crews with a lot of labor intensive practices and you know it's it's a business at the end of the day and it's really starting to show who is understanding their metrics and who's paying attention to what yeah yeah it makes sense <clears throat> yeah i i don't know i'm amazed by every time i see your guys stuff i'm like this is ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> well the nice thing with us is you name it we've seen it yeah that's cool with everything we touch did you guys end up making some content with the uh, becca and refrigeration technologies did she come out and see you guys or yeah she spent a day with us early spring late spring when yeah, was it? it was warm. It wasn't yeah. cold yet. <laughs> We're hand yeah. models and some stuff. <laughs> she came up on the roof. <laughs> she was she on got, the roof. She handled the ladder, no problem. She's a trooper, man. Uh, you yeah. took a filter to the face when the wind blew, and it was a dirty filter. <sighs> yeah. I'm bummed none of us caught it, because it would have been a great little blooper. <laughs> they were stacked perfectly, and the wind picked up and just perfectly picked up a filter and sent it right at her. And these filters probably hadn't been changed in two plus years. I'm going to give her right. I'm gonna say something to her tomorrow about it. Ask her when last time she <laughs> she says uh becca's great she's uh she's a good friend i, I love everything she does um they are killing it over there refrigeration technology her and yeah. Ash is just having a blast and making a difference yeah absolutely yeah we had a great time up on the roof she learned a lot and then a storm came in and we got rained out <laughs> <laughs> did she dress appropriately for being on the roof yeah she did fine mm-hmm I even brought some sunscreen, so you know. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited for AHR. We're gonna hang out. Um, I got several podcasts lined up. We got three going on. Um, I know Ridge is doing one. Um, Becca and Refrigeration Technology is doing another one. They got one left. Trying to work out a deal, get somebody on. And well, I'm excited for it. Um, it's gonna be a good time. Get away from uh, Indiana in February is always fun. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to have a break. Cause... Get out to Orlando. Yep. Have you guys done a symposium before? Or is this the first time for you guys as well? I've never been, but Matt's been. I've been once before. It was great. I'm excited for it. I'm ready to learn some stuff. I thought about trying to teach a session and I backed out of it. I chickened out. <laughs> well, you went last time. It was in HR. was in Orlando, right? Yeah. Last time it was in Orlando, I went. Nice, nice. We still have a book to play. She's got a list. We need to find it. It's going to change now because I don't think Jason's not staying as long now. He's got something come up. He's for work. He's going to leave Monday night. So he's only going to be a couple nights. So we may change 
So we need to get that booked, but I will remind Kelly to go ahead and get that taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a book flight still too, so. Oh, huh. yeah, at least, at least you got the right uh, dates now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Thanks, my quick Google search, like, mm, all right, you're right, you're right, those were wrong dates. <laughs> yep, and I was like, what are you talking about? No, it's not those dates. That was like this year, I think. Uh, so what happens when I do a quick Google while I'm in the middle of a service call. <laughs> it happens to everybody. Well, that was last year's dates, got it. <laughs> So anything else you guys want to talk about? I can't even think right now, to be honest. Ryan? Right out of the van and to here. And... <laughs> no, nah, I'm, nah, I'm just glad that this is a fun show, man. I like being able to talk shop with other people because I can talk shop with my wife. But then she's like, oh, that's interesting. But she don't know what I'm talking <laughs> just about. Just nodding and smiling. Oh, uh, Kelly. Nah. I, mean, I tried talking about my day, and she's just over here looking at her phone. I'm just like, keep talking. I'm like, oh, I feel better. At least I talked about it. <laughs> I've showed her pictures of stuff I work on, and she's like, oh, that's nasty. And I'm like, no, no, no you've not seen, no. Mm. That's the funny part. You're like, actually, that, that's pretty clean. Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> and honestly, that's why I don't show a lot of my stuff, because if I showed some of my stuff, these people would freak out. Like, uh, yeah, uh, dude, I used to post my ice machine cleanings on my personal Facebook all the time, all the time, bro. I had so many people bad. mad at me. It was great. They are the nastiest thing in the world. And people don't take care of them for shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish I would have known how to truly deep clean an ice machine when I worked in restaurants. Cause I was like that person who would at least drain it and scrub it and clean it. But it's never enough. I it, like it, it was funny. I was, uh, uh, I put a, couple pictures up on Instagram, an ice machine I cleaned a couple weeks ago, and there was black in the water trough. And I think somebody DM me and said, that, you shouldn't show that. That's, that's like nasty. And I'm like, well, that's not dirt or anything. It's where, because I, I talked to the manager. And I'm like, who changes your water filters? And he said, that's whatever the company was. And I said, you need to tell them Plus before that. Flush, yes. Carbon, flush, yeah. flush the carbon filters. I said because there's carbon dust inside of there. Because mm -hmm. I showed him, and he's like, "Is that dirt?" And I'm like, "No, that's carbon. That's where they're not doing the purge before they they put them in the service." I said, "That's why you have to flush them." I said, and "It doesn't take long, just two minutes." But that, it was good. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, that carbon dust will actually clog the orifices on the um, combo therms. We got a little bit teen orifice. It'll actually clog those up. It won't flow. Yep. So, but yeah, um, I like him. People are like, oh, look how clean my ice machine is. I cleaned it myself. And I just grab paper towel and I run it across the bottom of the water towel. <laughs> and show them. And they're like, oh, I didn't know they got there. I'm like, oh, it's everywhere. I was like, just because you my, clean My favorite is when they're like, yeah, we, we clean it every week. Really? How do you clean it? There's a clean button right there. They like they say it to you like you're stupid. But there's a clean button right there. I'm like, so did you take it apart? Did you use chemical? They're like, chemical? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the salesman said all I gotta do is hit this clean button and it'll clean itself <laughs> once a week. And I'm like, that salesman just wanted to make a commission off of you. Well, didn't the Mantwalks have the like the building cleaning chemical? Like you could have a little reservoir you keep it in or a little jug you could hook up to it and then clean. Some of the older ones do, and the true, the new trues that are coming out. Uh, I don't think the current iteration has it, but I was read or told or whatever. But the the newer ones that are getting ready to come out uh, are supposed to have something like that. And from what I understand, that those work pretty well. So true will actually be on the show coming up. Just a little uh, little uh, foreshadowing there, Brian. Uh, oh, you, guys use, you guys ever use those uh, bipolar ionizers for ice machines? Uh, there's, there's um, the UVs. Chick Fil A has them. They have, well, it's an ozone yeah. generator. It's not a UV. It's an ozone generator, and actually, you pump it in one side, and it's got to return. It's like a little pump, and it circulates the uh, ozone through the bin and the head and everything. And I think Does it make a difference. There's those too. Uh, I, from what I see, it made a difference. The ozone did. The ozone's some pretty gnarly stuff, man. It's been out for years. Um, it makes me sick. Oh, we have it, facilities that pump it. Oh, it's terrible for you. You're not supposed to breathe it in. Oh, yeah. Ble it bleaches shit. It literally bleaches stuff. Well, and it eats plastic and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yep. like, it's big in the hunting clothes, and it's an ozone generator. It's a tub. And, like, 
it tells you if your pants have elastic bands, like it's going to eat them and destroy them. Yep. So yeah, I used to run a cleaning company and we had an ozone machine and it had to be so far off the ground. So particulates had time to like diffuse before like bleaching your carpet, essentially. They make them for your van. So like if I smoke a cigar in my van, which I'll do a time time, I don't care, but uh, <laughs> all right, Jason, <laughs> shots fired at him, but uh, they make one that like plugs in your cigarette lighter and like it, it, eats everything out of your van like it'd be great for right. those grease you know stuff. how you get cigar smell out of your van yeah i found this out by accident you open a monster and leave it overnight you can smell <laughs> the monster yeah i did that by accident one time i left the monster open in my van and the next morning my, the cigar smell was completely gone out of my van i was like i probably shouldn't be drinking this crap anymore yeah what's probably it doing not. to your guts <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, it's absorbing uh, the toxins, it sounds like. <laughs> my breakfast was this morning. Uh, everyone's making this on TikTok. You take a core life vanilla protein from the gas station and you mix like an orange creamsicle, like energy drink, like a rain mm -hmm. or a ghost. And it is freaking amazing. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like ice cream, like an orange creamsicle ice cream. It's, hmm. it's, it's amazing. That's what I have. Yeah. To I, I do the orange cream cycle and the Gatorade Orange Zero because of diabetes oh my gosh yeah i i could drink those all day long man those are so good <laughs> you can tell we're service techs we live on energy drinks caffeine rage some of rain. <laughs> yeah <Sounds> about right. <laughs> all right guys well i'm gonna get off here i appreciate you guys coming on to hang out for a little bit and just to hang out and talk it's nice not having a topic and we can just shoot the shit and just be people man um I'm excited for AHR, um, uh -oh. and I was excited. I finally got to meet Rich last week. Uh, we hung out, smoked some cigars, drank cold beers. Um, we had a mad dash to who's going to pay, and he beat me up there. I wasn't paying attention. so. <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys coming on, um, and uh, I'm going to put out a promo video tomorrow, and I'll put the episode out Friday. So have a good night, everybody. Awesome. Right. Thanks for having All us. Right. Later, See you guys. Guys. Later. If you made it this far, we appreciate you making it to the end. If you'd like to be a guest on the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles or know someone that would be a good guest, let us know. Pat at CommercialKitchenChronicles.com or send us a DM. Also, thank you to our sponsors, Viper. Viper makes it easy for us to do what we do, and we appreciate them. Thanks, guys.